Hello, welcome back for another video on Ark Survival Ascended. We're back on the center map today. Are you struggling to find high quality saddles, weapons, and armor? Well, you've come to the right place. In this video, I'll be showcasing the top five best ways to farm blueprints and loot on the center map. Let's get straight into it. Kicking things off at number 5 is going to be the land supply beacons. By far the most accessible and easiest method of finding loot for the majority of players. These drops will offer a wide variety at that, including saddles, armor, weapons, tools, consumables, and a wide variety of pre-made structures. Blue, purple, yellow, and red crates are always worth picking up, with their loot tables offering plenty of loot that we desire, with the red land beacon being one of the only places you can find a wreck saddle on the map, which I'm sure is desired by many players. In at number 4 is going to be the East Lava Cave. It can be very dangerous. Dangers include extremely hot temperatures, risk of falling into lava, and the cave is filled with plenty of creepy crawlies, including titanoboas, spiders, scorpions, and arthropleura. Recommended equipment include either flak armor, preferably ghillie armor, due to the hot temperatures, a firearm of any kind to take out the arthropleuras from afar. I usually just bring a pump action shotgun with a decent stack of ammo. You may not even need to use it a melee weapon of some kind for those close encounters, a crossbow with a decent stack of grappling hooks, a good stack of medical brews, some extra parachutes may come in handy. I never bring stimulants, but it could be worth bringing if you have low fortitude. If you end up getting caught off guard, you may have a high chance of getting knocked out. You may need to bring a cryopod with you to be able to get your creature back out of the cave, depending on what creature you decide to bring, of course. And of course, don't forget your food and water. There is now a water source within the cave, which there wasn't before, which does make water management a lot easier. Recommended creatures for this cave are the Phylocolio, which can traverse the cave with ease with the ability to jump and climb vertical surfaces. The Pyromane, with its ability to transform into a rideable mount and transform back into a shoulder pet and being immune to lava. And the Pherizinosaurus or the Megatherium, as both of these will not aggro anything inside the cave. The Megatherium will also be great for harvesting thousands of chitin. The entrance can be found at 15 latitude, 62.4 longitude. The cave does not have easy land access. Instead, once you walk through the entrance, you will be met with a large drop to the bottom. In Ark Survival Evolved, you used to be able to fly down to the bottom of this drop without being kicked off. But in ASA, you cannot do that anymore. You will almost get instantly dismounted when attempting to fly down, which did make me a little sad, I must admit. You'll be needing to park your flyer on the side of one of the cliffs at the top of the entrance, which is why the Phylocolio is so good. It is very awkward to climb back up, but I can guarantee you it is possible. It took me a while to figure out a path in, but I did get there in the end. So the Philo has full access to the cave without the need for cryopods or grappling hooks. Once inside the cave, there are two paths that you can take. The left path will lead to Artifact of the Strong, while the right path will lead to Artifact of the Massive. There are three red loot crates that can spawn in this cave at a time, roughly taking around 45 minutes to respawn again. There are a number of potential spawn locations for the crates, with two potential crate spawns on the left path and around four potential crate spawns on the right path. Here's just a few of the most common spots I've found them in, and for the most part they can be easily spotted on the paths to both artifacts. In at number 3 is going to be the South Ice Cave, aka the Easy Snow Cave. The cave entrance can be found at 60 latitude, 20.2 longitude. Dangers include freezing cold temperatures, risk of falling, and cave creatures including direwolves, sabertooths, spiders, and yetis. I'd recommend bringing similar equipment to that of the first cave on the list, switching your armor to fur to counter the cold temperatures. For this cave, you can bring pretty much any creature that you want to, minus any type of flyer. The cave entrance is massive. You'll be able to fit anything in this cave. Personally, I enjoy using my imprinted Uteranus, as the only creature that aggroes to it is the Yeti, and its fear roll comes in very handy for dealing extra damage and making creatures flee. Of course, the Pyromane speaks for itself and will also be very good for this cave. Phylocolio, of course, has to get a mention. There is a lot of verticality in this cave, and the Phylo will be able to bypass most of the threats and get you to the loot crates very quickly. And finally, the Otter, of course, the cute little guy deserves a place on your shoulder. They provide a massive insulation buff to survivors and can also carry more than one of the same artifact in its inventory. If possible, I'd highly recommend taking an otter to any artifact cave just for this fact, especially if you are running the cave solo. The cave is a little bit of a maze, but it is also quite easy to navigate through. Once again, up to three loot crates will spawn, taking around 45 minutes to respawn again. Only yellow crates will spawn, but don't let this fool you. They can drop exceptional loot. If you're 
wanted to find a Shastasaurus saddle, this cave and the next cave on the list and these yellow crates are the best places to find them and will drop a wide variety of other tasty loot. In at number 2 is the West Lava Cave, aka the Pearl Cave, in my opinion the easiest out of all caves on the list, so it makes for a quick loot run. The cave entrance can be found at 20.2 latitude, 46.3 longitude. Dangers include clusters of cave creatures. Be sure to expect the usual suspects, the Titanoboas, the Arthropleuras, the Scorpions and Spiders. Recommended equipment once again, similar to that of the previous caves, I do recommend bringing flak armour for this one, and stimulant might also be a good shout, as there are lots of slivery suckers and creepy crawlies within the cave. There is a wide variety of creatures that are good for this cave, anything up to the size of a Megatherium will fit through the entrance. My personal favourite is the Baryonyx. It is one of the best cave mounts, it's fast, agile, has the ability to jump and allows you to wield your weapons while mounted, and most importantly has full access to the cave. Of course many other creatures will work, the Baryonyx is my preferred mount. There are two paths that you can take, the left path will lead to potential loot crate spawns and the right path will lead to artifact of the hunter and more potential loot crate spawns. Three yellow loot crates will spawn at a time and once again they will take around 45 minutes to respawn again. You will most likely have to check both paths to find all the loot crates within. The best thing about this cave is that it's relatively small so it never takes too long to fully loot it. Taking the number one spot is going to be the Jump Puzzle Cave. The best thing about the Puzzle Cave is that it can be run in under 5 minutes, assuming you don't get too greedy. The first red loot crate is very easy to get to, the second red crate is relatively easy, but the third red crate is very difficult. It all depends on whether or not your parkour skills are up to scratch. The only creature you will need for this cave is the Phylocolio. Its ability to climb vertical walls is a must have. Dangers include freezing cold and boiling hot temperatures, and risk of falling into lava. You may come across some creepy crawlies on the path down to the puzzle cave, which will include the usual suspects, spiders, scorpions, titanoboas, on and Arthur Pleura. I'd recommend bringing similar equipment to that of the previous cave, but most likely you won't need to use much equipment if any. It's more of a precaution shall we say, as once you do reach the jump puzzle cave, all you need is your filer and your wits. There are many entrances to this cave as it is in the underground world. It would take me a long time to go through all the entrances. I will show you the quickest way to reach it by land. You'll be needing to look for this tunnel. The cave entrance will be found in the center of this tunnel, which is located at 53.9 latitude 49.3 longitude there is only one real path that you can take which will lead you directly straight down to this point where you will see this giant bridge which is built over the river below jump your phyla into the water and swim your way to the pillar where your phyla can easily climb up to the top of the bridge jump over the gap in the bridge and head on forward which will bring you into a giant chamber known as the jump puzzle cave and this is where we need to be hug the left side of the room that leads past the pool of water then climb the wall with your phyla easiest red loot crate retrieval in the entire game and also artifact of the pack to its left if you're needing that too. Back in Ark Survival Evolved, the Phyla used to take massive health damage over time using this strat. It doesn't take any health damage anymore in Ark Survival Ascended but even if it gets changed back it's still relatively easy to do. All you need to do is pump your health on your Phyla. The other two red crates can be found in the jump puzzle itself where you have to parkour your way around a giant pool of lava at the bottom where it's very easy to fall in. If you are wanting to attempt this, I highly recommend placing down a bunch of sleeping bags and sticking all of your items on your phyla and attempting it naked. The second red crate is very close to the beginning of the jump puzzle. You'll only need to perform a few easy jumps to reach this one. One of the crates are pretty close by and you only have to do a few jumps and these few jumps are relatively easy. So I typically just go for that one. If I end up finding something good, I'll return on back to my phyla and call it quits, settling for only two red crates. The third and final crate is a a little more difficult to get to and my parkour skills ain't that great. And if you are wondering what types of loot you can find in these beacons and supply drops, please do go check out my recent video where I open up 100 of each and every crate to find out where all the loot can be had. Link will be in the description of the video and in a pinned comment. And that is the end of the video, I hope you all enjoyed it, hopefully it's helpful to you all and if it was helpful or you did enjoy it, please consider liking, commenting, sharing and subscribing for more art content, there's plenty more, there's plenty more to come and I'll catch you all in the next one. Take care, goodbye.